Okay, so uh, Jackson has finally settled down. Of course, as, I, as soon as I pulled this out, I figured that he might growl a little bit. We brought Buddy out, his other dog, who is a uh, Border Collie Great Dane mix. Now, Buddy uh, is does not have any issues with strangers, and he's a very happy, uh, sociable dog with dogs and uh, humans. And yeah. here's Buddy, <laughs> as if on cue. Um, so I wanted to bring out the other dog because I want to see how the dogs interact with one another. And sometimes having a second dog can have a calming influence on another dog. Um, but I also wanted to see, you know, was Buddy a contributing factor or was uh, he a calming factor? So um, once, uh, you know, things had settled down, you can see uh, that, uh, that Jackson has kind of settled down a bit. Now, he's still not happy that I'm here, uh, but he's, you know, you see his tail up. He's trying to engage with his guardian. He's kind of feeling more comfortable. So I just got done asking the guardians what rules the dogs had. And uh, we talked about some commands, but it really doesn't appear that the dogs have any rules. Dogs go through life probing, waiting for someone to correct them to say, this is the boundary, this is the limit, this is the extreme, this is uh, you know no more than this. If we don't correct them uh, very often, if we don't have rules, we don't correct them very often. This gives the dog often the impression that they have more authority than the same authority as us. Now, it can be confusing for a dog if it ha does things that leaders do, such as sitting up on the couch. Now, I'm sitting on in Jackson's position, which is probably not helping his perception of me. Um, but by allowing, Jackson, by not having any rules, and then allowing Jackson to sit at the same height as the humans, then he sees himself as having the same status. Now, you guys are a uh, couple, so you could tell your husband, I don't like that shirt, it makes you look stupid, go change it. He decides if he's gonna change his shirt because you guys have the same authority. So he has to agree to what you ask. If you have a child, you can tell the child what to do because you have the authority over your children. Because your dog has the same authority as you, listening to you becomes optional. So when you disagree with him, when he's behaving like this, now this is probably more of a fearful reaction, but when he reacts this way and you disagree, he ignores because he's like, you don't, you know, you're not, you don't have the authority to tell me what to do. So incorporating rules, especially when we have an insecure dog, is crucially important. It helps shrink down their world. Just like us, if we have children, or as we go through life, we have more responsibility get placed on our shoulders. Well, with responsibility comes some stress. And the more stressed that we are, the more uncomf you know, uncomfortable it can be, and we're not gonna perform very well while we're under stress. So for him, if he goes through life thinking that he has to be, there, that's a good sign, laying down is a good sign. He's still grumbling under his breath, but laying down says that he's comfortable enough around me to just lay down. Now the distance is helping. So uh, what I wanna talk about, uh, this is just kind of a conclusion of our evaluation period, but what I wanna talk about, and we'll talk about a little bit off camera, is how we can incorporate rules, boundaries, and limits to start helping to redefine the dynamics so the dog starts to identify as being in a follower position. When he's a follower position, then listening to is no longer optional. Does that make sense? All right.